my name is Miles Bloxon. I'm a native Austinite and I'm the co-host of Pause Play. Um, me being born and raised in Austin, I've seen like the inception pretty much of the live music capital of the world. It's always been a thing since I was a kid. And then going to like South by Southwest every single year, that's always been a thing in my household and with my family. So I've really gotten to see like the city transform over time, this entire time. So that's kind of the the lens that I bring to the podcast. And my name is Elizabeth McQueen. I'm not a native Austinite, but I have been here for like 20 years. And I am the other co-host. I moved Possibly. here in um, 2000. And I was a professional musician for a long time. I had my own band. And for a long time, I played and toured with a band called The Sleep at the Wheel. And so I was really inside the Austin music scene you know, for most of my time here, I got off the road in 2014 and I pretty much stopped playing music altogether in about 2017. And so um, it's been really nice for me to bring kind of a dual perspective to the podcast, like as someone who was in the scene and knows about Austin music, but now is also in a position at KUTX where I'm kind of on the other side, you know, instead of playing gigs, I'm talking about people playing gigs. The interesting question, actually. I mean, for me, uh, podcasting has kind of become like a language that I have learned to speak just because I've been doing it, you know, for a while with this song and, and then with the breaks. But what I love about podcasting and what I love about what we get to do with Pause Play is um, you get the time to really tell people's stories in a really kind of more complex way than you would in say like a five to seven minute news piece or in, you know, a long form article even. I mean, in a 30 minute podcast episode, you can really find out who someone is. You know, you can hear about their complexities, um, their hopes, their struggles. And it, it's just such an intimate kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like an intimate form, you know? Like, like you put your headphones in and you hear someone talking and it's just like they're talking right to you. So that's why I've really loved being able to create a podcast where people can hear these stories and go really in depth. That's the thing that people need, right? Is connection and intimacy. That's the thing that's hardest to get right now. Yeah, um, one artist that really, and Elizabeth might totally agree with me, who really touched my heart was Teddy the Legacy. He's from the east side of Austin, and that's where my family roots are. And um, him just going on his journey of becoming, like, you know, this hip hop artist, you know, from East Austin resonates with me in the first place, right? And then we started talking to him about the pandemic and how it's affected his music and how it's affected him overall. And he, you know, unlike some of the other artists who were able to keep going, he had to like go work. He had to do like, I think he was Ubering at the time. Uber driver. So when it first started, I was, I was scared. <laughs> I didn't work for like a month or two. I was just stuck at home, like trying not to get sick. And then it got to a point where like, I, I needed to pay bills. Like I didn't have no money. No, no, the savings was getting low. So I was getting worried. I was like, man, I'm just gonna get out here and work. If I get sick, I get sick. Like that's that's the country we live in. We gotta sacrifice our health just to keep our keep ourselves fed. Whoa, it's getting risky now. Can't even leave the house. Force me to think about what I suppose. I need a vision. The, the beginning of June. Um, I woke up one day just feeling not good, like just a little muggy, like I had an itchy throat and stuff like that. But then I started feeling like fatigue a little bit, a little feverish, hot. One of those days, like I was throwing up for like seven hours straight until like blood was coming out of my mouth. And so I got tested and then that that Sunday, they, I got my results back and it was like positive. I was like, wow, I probably got it Ubering. Told us that we'll be doing some shows, but the pandemic brought it to a start. I knew we were just for the love. They waiting on me to give up and to quit. Did all the features they wanted me to hit. And that just really touched me because it's like, he knew he had to go back and 
you know, grind to get to where he, he is now. But at the same time, he was like, I'm not going to forget about my passion and I'm going to continue to do whatever it takes to get where I'm trying to go. But he was just so humble with his story. He was so open with us and so generous with us. You know, just to let us know on a personal level, like, hey, yeah, I had to go back to an everyday job, you know, that some people wouldn't wouldn't have been able to humble themselves to go back to. But I'm still making my art and I'm still going to do what I need to do to get where I'm trying to go. So that story just like completely resonated with me. And you can tell that he's, of course, more hopeful and he's just such like he's like the sweetest guy ever. So that that also helps all on top of it. But yeah, it was just a, such a positive story. And you know, he's doing well now and he just came out with a, a new album. So, you know, he was doing definitely good. one where we were like, there's parts of it where he, you know, where he describes like having COVID where you're like, you're just like your heart is just in, you know, your heart just goes out to him. But then at the same time, like his, when he talks about being an artist and he talks about the music that he was making during quarantine, He's so open and so generous, and the music is so good. Like, Miles and I are huge fans. That You know, when we were making it, we are like, oh, we can't wait for other people to get to meet him and get to know him in this way, you know? He was, uh, yeah, he was definitely a great, a great uh, interview. And I also really enjoyed, you know, we talked to musicians and we also talked to people across the spectrum of the Austin mu music ecosystem, and we talked to... Um, we did a in uh, we did an episode on venues, and we talked to this couple, Maggie Lee and Tamara Hoover. They own a bar called Cheer Up Charlie's, and it's been closed since the shutdown. And so they told us about that, but also they told us about the history of the bar. And right before the shutdown, Maggie had actually in been undergoing treatment for breast cancer, Just and she was going to come out of her treatment. And they had seen South by Southwest as this like reset with Cheer Up Charlie's and then it all got shut down. So just talking to to them about all of that and how they survived the pandemic was really great. And mostly because like, despite everything, they just feel like they've created this really safe space for people with Cheer Up Charlie's. It's an LGBTQ friendly venue. And they've always wanted to create a place where people can come and be who they are. And, you know, that, mission was with them even when they were shut down like it drove them even when no one was coming to the bar and it drives them you know as they move forward um hopefully soon they'll reopen so that was one of my favorite too was like showing people kind of business owners who have a really specific reason why they do something and it's really good you know that those were one of my i favorites. think too the overall thing is that you know, everybody is so connected. We're all the same in, in a lot of ways. You know, artists, podcasters, venue owners, you can just hear this this connection. And I think that's what makes it so special as well. I think Elizabeth can tell us all about like the starting, the startup and, and how I even came into the picture. She would be perfect at telling this I started this having these conversations with our, um, program director Matt Riley again and he said well what if what if you did a podcast about uh you know live music during the pandemic and the strategies that people have and it sounded really simple like a really simple idea at the beginning and then when I started to get into it it especially the first episode which we wanted to kind of like chronicle what the shutdown was like but what the the cancellation of South by Southwest was like kind of leading up to the shutdown, I was like, oh, this is really a lot of work. So luckily I knew Miles from um, from KTX. We used to have shows right next to each other and you know, I would be leaving and she would be coming in. And back in the days when you could sit in a radio booth and talk to someone for hours, Miles would stay after and we'd, we'd talk for a long time. And so um, I went to her kind of hat in hand and said like, hey, would you like to help me with this podcast and be the co-host and I'm so lucky that she said yes because I honestly would not be able to do this on my own um she's been a total joy to work with and we work really well together and we're both kind of learning how to do this kind of audio together so it's the best decision ever 
Um, but yeah, that is definitely, it, it is a huge undertaking. And I think Miles and I are getting actually good. Now we've got a workflow, we understand what's going on. And we also understand how much work it takes to do certain things. And so now we can kind of say like, okay, we need like, here's, here's what we need to do to get this done. So it's, it's been and, really and I'm so lucky that she asked me to be her co-host because this is such a really cool project to be a part of. And like she said, it is a lot of work. And sometimes we have to have check-ins with each other. What we do like weekly check-ins is like, hey, are you doing too much? Am I doing too much? Am I not doing enough? Do you need help with that? And we just make it work. And like we have other people, of course, that are on staff at KUT and KUTX that kind of chime in and help us here and there. But for the most part, me and Elizabeth take on the majority of the workload. And we just kind of connect and, and try to figure things out as they come to us, no matter what it is. But it's not easy. And I feel like because we are such good friends and we also can just have open dialogue, like real open dialogue, that that is why we're able to work so well together. Because I know like, you know, when you sometimes when you work with someone, you can't just be completely honest with them. But we can completely be honest. We can talk to each other and say whatever. And we both know it's from the heart and it's from a place of love. And we just want it to put out the best product possible for the listeners. And that's what it all comes down to. So. I personally think we still have a ways to go before we, you know, exit the pandemic. So we've kind of charted like up to the shutdown. And then, you know, there has been some reopening of live music. We did a couple episodes about the return of live music to Austin because it, it is happening in a small way. But, you know, eventually once the vaccines are uh, available on a larger scale, we will exit this. and. I think it's going to be really interesting charting that, um, you know, coming out of the pandemic, because I think there's going to be this kind of like a long time where there's a gray area where it's not what it was before the pandemic, but it's not a shutdown. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see what that looks like. Um, as far as what it, you know, if we continue the podcast after everything is back to normal. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I don't even know what back to normal means anymore. You know, I, what do you think, Miles? I mean, we do have, okay, so we do, we're just finishing up our first season and we do have a second season that we're guaranteed like 10 more episodes. So for me, I feel like it just depends on what happens during that time, that time frame. Um, what I'm really excited about is all the music that has been made during this pandemic, because as Elizabeth can attest to, we've talked to a number of artists who are inspired by this time. And so the music that's about to come out or that's on its way out, that's, or that's coming out right now, is just such a great, you know, a great plethora of it, just inspired off of this one moment that we've all been living together as the entire world, right? So I'm excited about that space because I, I can't wait to get into those episodes when we start talking to people that have, you know, they created during this time and then they're releasing the music. But now. like, I think Miles is completely right. Like if there's one thing the pandemic has taught us, it's that we have no idea what's gonna happen tomorrow. And so making future plans <laughs> is, uh, is hard, yeah. It really is. But we're all hopeful and we're all inspired. And I think that that's what really matters, you know, during this time and that we take it moment by moment and we stay present in every single moment. And that's what's going to get us to the, to the outcome, right? To the future. Like, I think I can speak on behalf, of, of course, of me, but me and Elizabeth talk about this all the time because every time we talk to an artist or someone that works in the, the field, we always ask, you know, like, how do you see this? What do you see coming of this? And like I was saying earlier, a lot of people are just super positive about the outcome of it. I'm hoping that artists get paid so much more money. I hope that <laughs> I hope that everyone who is not getting paid as much as they should for their art gets paid for their art. And that we also just realize overall how important music is for all of us because it, it actually connects us all. Like no matter where you're from, no matter what your background is, 
But like Elizabeth was saying earlier, we cannot predict the future. We do not know what's going to happen. But I just hope that, you know, we're all back in a room together at a concert, just jamming out, having a good time and not having to worry about wearing a mask or what did I touch? Where's my hand sanitizer? All of that stuff. So when we get back there, that's going to be my like aha moment like my happy moment. I'm so. so looking forward to going to a show and like packing myself in with a bunch of people and getting sweaty and singing along with a band and not worrying about, you know, how far my <laughs> droplets are going from my mouth or whatever. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm also really, I will be really interested to see and I'm really hopeful that like this, uh, another thing that we've heard from a lot of people like, uh, whether they're musicians or they're in the industry is that this is a time to sit and reflect about what was working and what wasn't in the music industry before and there have been a number of um advocacy organizations that have popped up during this like the like neva the national independent venue association that successfully lobbied for the save our stages act which is like a 15 billion dollar infusion of help for cultural institutions um here in Austin, Austin, Texas Musicians, which is an advocacy group that existed before the pandemic, has been super, um, super active in, you know, fighting to get people uh, emergency um, help from the government and also just fighting, like letting people know what's going on and and having a voice for musicians. And there's also the Amplified Sound Coalition, which is a completely new uh, group that sprang up around venue funding, but is like an adv advocacy group for the Austin music industry. And um, you also have the Live Music Fund and the Black Live Music Fund that are happening. There's so many things that I think are gonna be really positive and we have this moment to reassess how we did things and how we wanna do things. And so when it comes to equity issues, when it comes to pay issues, when it comes to all the things that were, you know, not so great pre-pandemic about the Austin music scene. I'm hoping that when we get back to a situation where live music is again, coming out of like every bar and restaurant and grocery store, that it'll look better for, for the people that it didn't, it wasn't so great for before and it'll look better overall. I want them to be inspired more than anything um, by these different stories and these different people in different walks of lives. And also people that are just a part of this, you know, like this big music industry that makes the world go round or makes Austin go round per se, that keeps us all connected. Like I want them to be informed. And then I also want them to have that human connection that we feel when we're interviewing every single person that we talk to. The same way. I think one of the great things about this podcast at for both Miles and I, it's like, even though, you know, we've been around Austin music for a really long time, we don't necessarily know the ins and outs of venue ownership or what it takes to run a festival or, you know, I, I think there's a real opportunity for, like Miles said, for us to let people know, you know, what people are actually doing, what their lives are actually like. And then for me, I really want people, or I hope, I guess, that if people understand these different aspects of Austin music and understand, you know, know the stories of the people who are making these things ha happen, then it'll just drive home the point of how important Austin music is. Like music is a huge part of Austin and we call ourselves the live music capital of the world, but I think a lot of times people just take that for granted. And here we are in this situation where, you know, at, at points it's looked like, will this even survive? You know, so, you know, right now and moving forward, it's like if you really understand it, if you really know the people, then maybe you can start to put some real value into into music and, um, and hopefully that'll drive some personal decision making about what's important for our city to fund, what's important for people to do on an individual basis. So.